Welcome back to Tom's World Scale Model Series. In this episode, we look at the Hobby Boss 135th Scale GMC Bofors 40mm gun. If you enjoy programming on scale modeling, then show your support by subscribing to this channel. Leave us a comment, like, dislike, or share the video with friends. Clicking the notification bell gives you alerts when we post new content. Or visit the channel Tom's World for a friendly visit for a complete list of all our videos. The GMC CCKW 6x6 truck, also known as the Jimmy or Deuce and a Half, was vital to Allied efforts in World War II. This medium, all-weather, all-terrain hauler kept the troops and their supplies moving in every theater in which the Allies fought during World War II. So robust and reliable was the design that it served in subsequent campaigns right into the first Gulf War. Nearly 570,000 were built, which attests to its brilliant design and immeasurable utility. Stay with us as we unbox Hobby Boss's excellent miniature rendition of this venerable and legendary vehicle. So welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me again today. So today we've got this Hobby Boss 135th scale GMC Bofors 40 millimeter gun. Uh, not a terrible kit name, but doesn't quite accurately uh, name the vehicle, but we'll talk about that in a second. So there it is, kit 82459, originally released in 2012, so not an old kit by any stretch, and we'll see that by the quality of the molding. Available pretty much anywhere uh, for about $34 today, translated into $45 Canadian, so kind of a mid-priced kit. And uh, not a big box, although you get quite a few sprues, but uh, not a big box, 32 centimeters by 12 and a half inches, We've got, so let's see here, nine and a half inches by 24 centimeters and tall, not very tall, two and a quarter by six centimeters, so not a big box. So it looks to me like probably the setting of the box art's going to be probably France 1944. And uh, interestingly enough, it looks like it depicts a free French unit. There's uh, the borders of France and the uh, free French cross of Lorraine. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the decals. And there's the French flag, of course. Now, no emblems or crests on the uniforms, and they look like they're American issue, but, uh, you know, probably belonging to that free French unit. Though there's crew members depicted on the box art, no figures are enclosed, but they do have a little uh, disclaimer here. Actual model may vary from image on box. So there it is. Now, interestingly enough, it does depict the open cab version. This is the only one in the product line that does have the open cab. So if you want the open cab, this is definitely the kit you want to get. And it uh, looks like the long bodied version, it did come in a short bodied version. And uh, now, the title there, GMC Bofors, GMC had nothing to do with Bofors. Bofors is the manufacturer of the gun, and GMC was the truck, of course. Now, that truck technically had a lot of different names. It has, uh, uh, gosh, M20. Uh, the later version was actually, what was it, the uh, M35, then it was an M36, an M37. But the actual name during the Second World War was actual GMC CCKW. Now, that CCKW is not an acronym. I'm going to bring up a little chart. And here's how those letters break out. So the C uh, tells us that it was designed in 1941. Uh, the C is for conventional cab. The K is all-wheel drive. And W is dual rear axles. Now, I think the name that it went by in World War II from what I've read is Jimmy. And I think it acquired the name Deuce and a Half post-Second World War. But that's probably the two names that uh, are most recognizable. Jimmy or the Deuce and a Half. And that's what I'll be referring to. it. I don't want to run around saying CCKW. So uh, there it is. All right, so what else can we talk about? Uh, well, let's have a look at the other side of the box. So, it's a drab vehicle. Now, I'm just going to have to do my little autofocus trick here, guys. So, stick with me. My autofocus isn't very good, so I have to manually focus it. And what I think I'm also going to do is knock down the exposure a little bit because that is really bright. Okay, there it is. So, it gives us the side angles. Uh, not particularly helpful because it's all olive drab, but it is good because, well, for different reasons, I guess. When we build, we have something to refer to all the different sides, so alignment and things of that nature. Now, it's got a little write-up, and this uh, translation is really cheesy, a lot of uh, grammar errors and things, but we won't get into that. I don't know why these firms don't localize these things properly. It's a little bit cheesy when the write-ups are kind of bad, but anyways, uh, the box was not shrink wrap, but it did have the little security sticker, and the box was crushed a little bit, but not not a big deal. Now the other side, 
It's just the front and back of the vehicle. Again, helpful. Uh, more so when there's uh, camouflage patterning, but that'll work for us. And it shows us that we got that little PE sheet, and this time the translation is in Chinese. It's also 40 millimeter scale, which we don't refer to too much uh, in North America. The other sides of the box are just the typical box art, so when it sits on a shelf, you know what it is. So, all right, so let's bring this box back again. All right, so before we jump into the sprues, why don't we have a quick look at the uh, Hobby Boss 135th scale GMC Deuce and a Half product line. Hobby Boss has released five versions of the GMC Deuce and a Half. The kits share many parts, the frame assembly and tires for example, and most of the kits releases come with a fully enclosed cab with the exception of our Bofors version. The kits differ primarily in their beds, overall configuration, PE sheets and decals. All come with the full engine as well as the string, metal wire and poly caps. All these kits are readily available at most large retailers. Kit 82459 was the initial release. Uh, it came out in 2012. That's the one we're unboxing. And uh, it's widely available and priced at about 34 US today. As we'll see, there are 15 sprues plus one clear tree in the box. Uh, this is the only kit in the line that depicts the open cab and a nicely molded single 40 millimeter Bofors auto cannon mount is also enclosed. Personnel are depicted on the box art, but no figures are included in any of the kits in this product line. That was followed by kit 83, 830 in 2014. The price today runs about 56 US. Contained are 14 spruce plus one clear one. It includes parts to build the hardtop cap and the truck takes the form of the refueling variant. So that uh, means you get the giant gas tank and its specialized bed. And that comes with a version specific decal sheet and dedicated PE fret. Kits 83831 and 83832 both followed a year later in 2015. Their price again, $56 US. These kits are very similar and share many parts. Indeed, we have to look pretty closely to differentiate them. One builds up into the steel cargo bed version and the other depicts the wood sided variant. You'll have to go aftermarket if you want cargo or figures since neither kit contains them. The kits also have other minor accoutrements which differentiate them from the other releases. And finally kit 83833 rounds out the Hobby Boss Deuce and a Half family. It also retails for about 56 US today. It appears to uh, have the ring mount for the M2 Browning 50 caliber machine gun. Uh, the kit does come with benches and the cargo area would suggest that this is a troop carrier version. Of course it has that nicely molded 50 caliber machine gun. A unique to this release is the cab roof which uh, has what appears to be a hatch uh, perhaps for the assistant driver to fire a weapon out of. I found the pricing on this line a bit unusual. For example, today's price on most online retailers is about $34 US. Uh, that's the initial release, our Bofors version. Uh, whereas the price for the subsequent releases has skyrocketed to uh, $56 US. So that's, a, that's kind of on the hefty side. The main difference in these two groups is the full cab, so I can only assume its manufacturing requires a steeper purchase price. Hint, if you want to build the uh, GMC Deuce and a half, purchase the initial version if you're price sensitive. Other kit manufacturers Manufacturers do make the CCKW in 135th scale, but the Hobby Boss kits are the newest releases and generally they're acknowledged as the gold standard for this particular subject matter. Okay, so let's crack this box. Now, I've probably opened a million kits in my life, but I still get the pang of that excitement and nostalgia. And uh, so many kits, so little time. So there it is. Oh, and look at that. So I brought down the exposure on my camera a little bit just because the bags are blowing out the lens. And this kit's not going to be exactly the way uh, packed the way I'm showing here because I've rummaged through here. And it's just drab plastic, so it's not going to look great on these shots. So we'll get in closer, but I'm just going to haul everything out of the bag just so we can kind of get a general overview. 15 sprues, and we're counting these little ones as separate. I mean, I'm not going to count these as thirds. That's not going to help anything. So 15 sprues. Some of them are wrapped with a little bit of extra protection, which is kind of nice for those delicate parts. Uh, so we'll set that aside. Look at this. It's just bottomless. It's sprue atop a sprue, a cornucopia, as we like to say. Look at this. Just goes on and on. Okay, lots of plastic, so tons of detail. So that's fantastic. Great value for the 34 American we spent. Uh, looks like four little bags. I'm just going to lay everything out so we got a good overview. There's our PE. Very nice. Uh, put that like that. Oh, and look at this poly caps. Interesting. We'll talk about those a little bit later. There's our clear parts. And we've got our paperwork there at the bottom, which we want to get at. So uh, let me just uh, make sure I've got nothing loose in the, in the box. The kit does come with the uh, color guide. It's a uh, full color glossy, a little ratty out of the box. Some of the edges are... Uh, folded here a little bit so that's a little disappointing but it'll work 
and uh, does depict uh, obviously all the different angles and paints that you're going to require as most color guides. Now what is kind of odd is most manufacturers when they do a color guide here, especially when they show decals, they do identify the unit and where it's served and sometimes they give you more than one choice and this you only have the single choice. Now we have no details with respect to what unit this is, but I did a little bit of my own research just based on that emblem. Now I couldn't nail it down exactly, but uh, my best guess on this particular vehicle would be obviously the French forces because of the flag but it would have been the second armored division serving in France 1944 and belonging to likely the 22nd colonial territory force anti-aircraft battalion so that would be my guess for this particular uh, marking scheme here with the decals so again all all of drab which is always a challenge because drab is so dark but uh, we're not totally um totally held to that dark drab nowadays seems like you could pretty much use any drab but we've got some ways that we can gussy up this monochromatic paint scheme uh, not too many paints looks like eight different colors but they have great translations everything including mr hobby vallejo model master tamia and humbrol so it looks like they have you covered depending on which brand you like now here's the instructions. Now I know that Hobby Boss are not printers, but in real life this picture is printed very dark. You can well, you can tell what it is, but it's a little dark, not the greatest quality control, but it'll work for us. Uh, the paper's a little rough, but I kind of like it because it's it's got a little bit of texture to it. Now again, uh, no details on the history or backstory of the vehicle. Just a tiny little paragraph on that hideous uh, translation on the box. But that's okay. We do our research uh, by the internet and through books and magazines. All right, so starting off, um, well, I don't know. It's about maybe, I don't know, well, how many pages here? Well, about 16 pages. So not a, not, a, not a big instruction booklet, very clear, a little small, but very clear. So we get our sprue map, which is always handy. And by my count, 15 sprues. So a little bit bigger kit than I originally expected. I don't have tons of experience with Hobby Boss. So, all right, so uh, we have a full engine, which is amazing. And that is that uh, GMC 270. That's a straight six inline gasoline engine. I'm not sure if it's multi-fuel. I think I might've read that it is multi-fuel and develops about 104 horsepower. Now we don't get um, any of the um, cables. Like for example, the spark plug wires that run to the distribution cap but we can always add those later but in general a beautiful little engine included in the kit and the hood is posable so we can uh, show that off so almost a little kit unto itself very nice so when we compare this to the steer and the kubel like we've had our experience in the past uh, those frames were almost complete out of the box in those two tamiya kits but we can see here every little bit we have to add so hobby boss kits are a little bit more involved a little bit more engaging probably not for the beginner or younger modeler but uh, if you're looking for a, an engaging build with quite a few parts, then this Hobby Boss seems to fit the uh, the bill. Lots of differentials, of course, because it is a 6x6, six six, so six wheels are driven. Looks like a little bit of P being bent here for the bumper. And we have our muffler, and we do see that there's a little dimple there to help us drill that out. We always make a big deal about that, but uh, there that is. And uh, there's the little, uh, well, the winch cable there, and they tell us to paint it steel at the end. That's string, so we'll have to see about that string. I'm not sure if there's any... Uh, any cable we can like actual steel cable we can get our hands on but we'll see kind of used for hanging pictures but we'll see so there's the frame we can see quite a few steps just to build out that frame so again a little bit more uh involved than some of the past tamiya kits we've looked at the steer and the kubel so here's the leaf springs going down we're not going to play guess the parts but and uh, there's some of the differentials getting uh, built up. Now, it is interesting, a couple things here. We can see that uh, these are all separate parts. So we'll have to see how those build aids are and how rigid that goes together. One for strength and two for alignment. Now, strength, we can probably be okay because it'll get attached to the frame. But we we'll just have to make sure those are aligned properly because uh, if we get those off, those wheels will be wonky. So there's that, and it doesn't look like the posts are posable. I always like to pose my front wheels turn, so we can probably solve that problem the same way we solved the steer. It just looks like the uh, same sort of arrangement, so there that is. All right, and uh, oh, look at all the drivetrains. Well, it is a 6x6, so it's got lots of uh, drive shafts, so lots of detail on the underbody. Amazing. You don't see most of this unless, of course, you put it on a uh, mirror base, but I'm looking forward to building all that up. I love weathering underneath vehicles. It's fantastic. So, yeah, top view to make sure you get your alignment there. So, that's kind of nice. 
Um, you know, this vehicle was just amazing. The fact that it was conceived in 1941 and it served all the way to the first Gulf War. Very robust design. Came in a bewildering assortment of um, variants from, uh, you know, troop transports to cargo to gun carriers, as we see here. There was a refueler version. Those were all the long bodied versions. Uh, and the short body version, I think the Wrecker. The GMC Jimmy Wrecker had the short body version, but uh, very, very robust design and really uh, kind of stood the test of time. But uh, anyways, getting back to this, so this is where some of the complaints are. We can see that the wheels are two part. I'm not sure why they didn't do it like Tamiya did it. Tamiya had a much better solution for this. So generally what we'll do is we'll build up one, see how bad that seam is, uh, because the real article did not have seams there. So. We'll have to see. We'll build up one, see how it turns out. If it's really awful, well, maybe aftermarket or uh, maybe a little bit of filling ahead of us. We'll see. All right, so there's the wheels getting made it to the frame. Uh, so one thing I'm glad about is some manufacturers actually will uh, cast the windshield wipers into the clear plastic uh, windscreen. I don't like that. It never looks good even once it's painted. Here they're giving us separate PE parts for the wipers so I'm kind of happy about that so that's that's great now don't forget this is the open cab design and does not have a roof so there's the seats going in some of the stick shifts and the, and such there's the radiator and uh, nice that there's no knock-up pins on the inside of the doors and these are your doors and uh, you actually does look like you have some I believe yeah later step shows PE parts for the handle so that's kind of nice couple of PE parts going in here we're bending those all right and here's the cab coming together now one interesting thing is these louvers are not perforated uh, and i guess you know it's a bit probably a bit much to ask for in styrene but we'll look at that part later some uh, well the door handles there so you know those will have a nice three-dimensional look we'll have to see probably very tiny uh, the headlights going down in that characteristic uh, jimmy sort of what well, cow catcher or what do you want to call it rat, rat protector grill so very characteristic of this particular vehicle. Now some of the bed going in. This uh, looks like probably the mount for the um, Bofors. But here's the bed. Lots of wood uh, texturing in there. We'll have a look at that. Uh, little jerry cans going in there. And I would have never guessed that bed would have this many parts. So we could see that this is uh, not a super simple kit. Especially coming off some of the Tamiya stuff. But we don't mind a challenge, uh, you know, but it is really a factor of time, right? So, and we might be able to get away with a little bit of our uh, chipping technique on bare wood here, which would be kind of nice. So the tail light's going in. There it is there. We're getting closer to the bulfers. Uh, looks like the hand crank to level the gun. Some more bed detail going down. Some of the mounts. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Another uh, P part there. And uh, there's that Bofors. Almost looks like a gigantic 50 caliber, but it's not 40 millimeter auto cannon. And uh, the barrel of slide moldings actually looks great out of the box. So we're not going to need any aftermarket on this guy. I know some builders usually replace this uh, spring part. Uh, it's just plastic in the kit, but uh, we'll see. Uh, Two-part body on this. We'll have to watch our seam. There's some details that go up top, which might hide the seam. We'll have to see that. Um, I thought that was maybe the deflector, but it's not. That looks like the liner for when you load the little clips in. And we can see it here, yeah. And it does give you a couple little clips. There's sort of uh, four bullet clips, if you will, four cartridge clips. And it says no cement here, so I'm assuming the gun, when the model's complete, uh, can rotate, that is, traverse and elevate, if you do decide to build it as such. It looks to me like some clear parts going on the... Uh, well, I'm not sure. That might be a calibration for the gun or a sight for the gun. The gun actually has some large reticle sights. But it does look like optics here, and they give you a little clear piece, which is kind of cool. Little hand crank had lots of detail on the gun. This gun is almost like a little kit unto itself. Should look great once it's all put together. Lots of detail. And uh, some P parts going here, and thank goodness they do give us those big sort of reticle sights for the gun and P. That would have not been good in plastic. And there's the seats. And the spare, and here's your ammo crates with some decals, which is kind of nice. And here the bed's getting made it to the body. And here we got that uh, that brass wire that we have to shape. They give us a little template, and there it is there. I think it's just a stiffener for, for that compartment. Maybe uh, ties it down also, the, the um, radiator there. And there's the hood. It does show that it can. Well, it's a separate piece, so we can obviously pose it open. And I've seen pictures of it. It looks great, so 
Why put in all that work on the engine and not show it? So we'll see if we have time. And then finally, just bringing it all together. There's the gun mating in it. Again, it does look like it traverses. And interestingly enough, in continuous fire, what I've read is that uh, gun every 100 rounds had to change out the barrel. So you always wanted to have one handy, and your crew had to be Johnny on the spot. But uh, apparently the crew training covered the barrel changing so they could do it very very quickly so otherwise your barrel basically melts because of the heat now this is kind of an interesting piece this long piece that connects the mirror but and uh, it kind of makes sense now so it seems to me like a little fragile on battlefield that's just screaming to get broken off the vehicle however where else do you det attach it modern vehicles usually put it on the frame of the cab which would be here uh, or possibly even the windscreen but because the windscreen pivots here that would make sense so it, it does make sense that they attach the side of the body it's just so long it seems so fragile and there's the final vehicle so that's the instructions very clear the drawings are great and uh, again a little bit more involved than i thought so let's have a look at some of the plastic so no particular order here is a b for bravo you get one of these and uh, originally i thought the molding on this hobby boss kit might have been a little soft but the more i look at it the more i think that actually the quality is quite good i think it's just the color of the plastic because really the molding is quite crisp you know there's the firewall looks good and there's the grill and no flash there and you know in some respects the molding might even be better than Tamiya and here's what I mean so on the Tamiya kits the Kuba wagon and the steer their windscreens had knockouts on the four corners they were definitely there and this does not have knockouts in fact I don't see knockouts in any dodgy places anywhere on this kit like even on the inside of the hood if you pose it open although you wouldn't see that surface you don't get a knockout there now you get some there but that's not seen that is totally hidden that's on the on the floor of the compartment and uh, no anti-skid on that but uh, we can help that along a little bit now one gripe I do have uh, and really may it might be just nitpicking because really you, can, you can't really do it in plastic uh, these louvers are solid now I'm not even sure you could perforate those with PE but those are solid they still look good and there's some more there I believe that's under the doors on the exterior of the cab so again solid not a big deal uh, so the steering wheel isn't scale and again you know the molding is is crisp I mean look at that so I'm just looking for a buckle or something to compare which I doubt will get a little bit of anti skid texture there you know the stick shifts and just uh, to be sure there it is there 82459 and I suspect that these molds most of them will be that number even in the other variants because uh, all the all the all the uh, GMC jimmies in this line share a lot of these sprues now one thing I did want to show you on here uh, what was it oh there we are uh, the texturing on that dashboard now I don't know I have to catch the light just right but there it is there you can just barely see it almost looks like I don't know what that is polished steel or something or maybe even wood I don't know some neat texturing on there now I wish that armor modelers would give us smooth dashboards for us guys who like to put on decals instead of you know dry brushing those gauges on it'd be nice to get a smooth version of that and the airplane models kits usually come with that and the airplane model kits also are so much more advanced because they've built up their um, uh, their uh, instrumentation with uh, colored PE and you know clear parts and it looks great and armor kits don't have that one issue is that that sprue gates kind of on that uh, exposed side to the hood so and I can see a little stress crack there so we might have to do a little bit of filling there but it looks great look at the little clips okay so there's that sprue times one b for bravo let's focus in on that next we get this one times two and it's actually two sprues in one which i'll show you in a minute but it's actually a gh sprues golf and uh, hotel i guess that would be the orientation there and uh, again details good there's a couple issues on this one though i just want to look at it look good, real quick here so the handles on the ammo box are quite nice there's the four clip uh, cartridges i guess turn handle uh but uh the jerry cans don't have any lettering not raised nor indented so that's that's not quite right uh there's the seat lightning holes we should probably probably drill those out or clean those out so here's the wood texturing I'll try to get a little bit closer here I don't have a lot of experience with this type of wood texturing it looks like it's raised 
Uh, so maybe a slightly different technique to paint that up, probably dry brushing. So that's kind of interesting. And uh, let's see what else. Now the detail here, the hinge detail, I have to say is not as good as Tamiya or some of the um, Dragon and or Ming stuff we've been looking at. You just get this little rod there for that hinge. Should be broken up into three little segments. And the hinge de or the latch detail, well, it's okay. So in some, in some places it's not as good as Tamiya or the Ming stuff we've been looking at. But we do see an open fret here. And we have slide molding on this part right here. And the one beside it, and these, these two here. So a little nipple on the end there. So some slide molding, some modern molding. 2000 and uh, what, what year was the kit? 2012. So, but uh, well, you know, the latch detail there is good. You know, that's up to the to me a standard. So in some places they get it, not all, but that looks good. All right, so that's times two, and that's Golf Hotel. So that's followed by this one. This one's going to be, uh, let's see here, F for Foxtrot. And uh, this sprue here, you just get one of these. And the two that we just saw, or the four that we just saw, however you uh, want to look at that, are probably just uh, specific to the Bofors kit because it does have the Bofors uh, parts on it. Now, this came with a little bit of extra um, foam here, which is nice. And that is actually protecting probably that little delicate part there. So I do want to replace, put that back as I put this back in the box. But let's have a look at this. So this will be the Bofors gun parts uh, let me just get a focus for you guys here and uh you know again the molding's good really no problems there no nasty knockouts this is gonna be the gun and that looks fine you know that looks actually quite nice now again there's gonna be a seam because we're putting that gun together in two parts but some parts go on top now we're starting to see some more delicate parts so that's quite delicate very nice actually yeah good detail on that and a little foot pedals and uh, this part here that's the spring for the gun now, a lot of people do replace that i don't know we like to build out of the box here just to show what it's like and there's the barrel very nice uh yeah no need for aftermarket that's that characteristic bofors i'm not sure if there's any perforations in there but it is slide molded so that's great and so is that piece there very nice open end uh what else can we look at well you know the molding is good I don't have any gripes there. And the little deflector part there probably has a little bit of flash around the edges because it's got a really sharp edge. Let's see. Ooh, knockouts on the inside. I don't know. Depending on the orientation of that thing, that's in a bad spot. Uh, we can always fix that. Okay. I don't even know if we have to fix it, but uh, okay. So there that one is. That's mostly your bofors, and there's the optics real quick. Looks good. Then give you some PE parts that go on top of that. So, okay, so one times that F for Foxtrot. Then we get C for Charlie times two. And again, uh, Hobby Boss packed it with a little extra foam, which I really actually do appreciate, especially in that sprue that we just saw where we had that really delicate piping for that Bofors. Uh, if it, you know, if the part comes broken, it really sucks the spirit out of the kit. And it uh, does show that Hobby Boss has taken the time uh, to consider when the uh, customer finally gets the product in their hands that it's not hanging in pieces. And uh, nothing came loose in this kit in the bag. So that's nice. So I do appreciate that. So there's C for Charlie times two. And again, all the sprues so far have been stamped 82459. So that would have been the initial release. Other than the Beaufort sprues, a lot of these sprues are going to be in all the kits in this line. Now to get a good idea of the quality of the molding, let me just get that one out of the way. I just want to focus in on this hub. And I just need to focus it for you guys. So let's just focus this and get in really close. And we can see the separation on the nut and bolt. And I'll hold that in there carefully. There we are. Look at that. So that is solid. I don't see a air valve, but I'm not sure if that's on the wheel. I don't think air valves are pretty rare in model kits. A uh, liner for the wheel, some of the differential. We're not going to play guess the parts, but and we're starting to get into some tiny parts now. Uh, you know, if we look at that hook there, that is tiny wee. And now might even be the motor, our famous motors for the windshield wipers. I'm not sure about that. Anyways, don't want to lose my place. Uh, let's see here. So there's our headlights. Now we do get clear plastic for the headlights. So I'm not sure what's that. But the, the detail is, is great. No problems there. And I did want to show this. 
and I got to get in close here, but this is really great attention to detail. Uh, the pimples on the pedal, and that comes up to the standard of Mang. Mang had that as well. Now, to me, it doesn't normally have the pimples on the foot pedals, but there it is. I'm pretty sure that's a foot pedal. But and if you look to my finger to scale, that attention to detail is fantastic. Uh, Trying to get some of the light here. There we are. Kind of a tough shot. It's close, very close to the camera. And uh, just some of the details on the leaf springs. They look great. Now we do have a parting line, but that's pretty much standard for all kits that do leaf springs. So very nice. There's the wheel detail. It's good. But again, we're going to have a big seam down the side. So we'll have to see. So there's C for Charlie times two. Then we have times five D for Delta, and these are just going to be the wheels. And uh, again, this sprue would probably be common to all the variants in the line. Construction is very similar to the way Tamiya does it with the with the hubs, but the uh, the the wheels, the actual tires, not crazy about it because they are two part, and there's going to be a seam. So let's focus in on that. I mean, the detail's good, but you know, again, two part wheels, and the real article does not have a seam that runs down the uh, circumference of it, and just some wheel liners. So pretty straightforward. Uh, it's too bad they didn't construct them the way the steer tires did because there was no seam on the outside in the Tamiya version. So in that respect, Tamiya got uh, one up on Hobby Boss. So that's times five for that one. And again, this sprue, just to be sure, is, uh, let's see here, is uh, dated and marked again, 84, sorry, 82, 459. So that's the initial release. And these uh, sprues here would be common to probably all the variants, I would say, in the entire uh, Jimmy line. So, okay, so there's that one. And that takes us to sprue A for alpha. We get times one. Now, I just wanted to leave in the bag just to say that if you have young children around or if you're a younger modeler, there is a danger of asphyxiation with these bags. Kids put them over their heads or they stick them in their mouth. So make sure if you have young children around, especially to dispose of these bags quickly and responsibly. So enough preaching. But again, it's always good to be safety minded. Sometimes danger lurks in the oddest places. So, so there it is. There, some great detail. And this sprue again, uh, stamped eighty-two four fifty-nine. Probably common to uh, all the variants in this product line of Jimmy in the uh, Hobby Boss line. But again, you know, very good molding. As I. As I said earlier, this is the manifold, uh, that I thought maybe the molding was soft, but now that I'm looking at it, really it's up to par uh, with you know premium brands. So really excellent. That's the radiator fan, kind of reminiscent of molding of the way Eddard does stuff. There's the motor, the engine, very nice. It's actually an engine, sorry, not a motor, motor's electric. Okay, and there's the, uh, well, that's the uh, oil pan, I guess. Anyways, we're not gonna play guess the parts, but we're gonna have a quick look, very nice. That'd be the valve covers, I guess. Tiny little parts there. And again, more leaf spring detail, and it's very nice. There we go. Just wanted to catch the uh, the layers of the leaves there. And uh, a lot of the drive shafts and such. And there's the muffler. And uh, yeah, a little nipple there on the end for us to help us out to hollow it out. And that is not the side that connects to the manifold. That is actually the exhaust side. I'm not sure how they do that. There's a bit of scuffing on the end, but I don't care. Very easy to clean up, but they give you a little pilot hole there to hollow that out. I'm really big on the muffler hollow it, as you know. Again, very nice detail. No complaints there. And there's the frame parts. So this sprue here, A for Alpha, would probably be common, as I said, to all the variants in the product line because it's mostly the frame and the engine. So I'm a little bit dark on this shot, but I think you get the gist of it. And finally, for the main sprue trees, we get this, E for Echo times one, rather large sprue. And again, it's stamped 82459, probably specific just to the Bofors version of the uh, Hobby Boss Jimmy line, because mostly it's got the uh, bed features. Now, the other uh, variants in the Hobby Boss line also have the different cab, but this is one main differentiator. So this is probably specific to just this kit. Now, we're not going to Google too much over wood detail, but it does look good. I catch it in the lights and I would think that this technique of doing that would be to probably the undercoat would be a light wood color and then we would dry brush that with like an ochre not an ochre I'm sorry a burnt umber like a dark brown 
and that would look great. Now, of course, in the real article, that's painted wood, but we could do a sort of a wood chip there, wood chip, <laughs> chipping technique to uh, show sort of the, uh, the the drab wearing off and showing the wood underneath. So uh, some of the detailing there on the uh, taillights, very nice. And there's the horn. Let me get that in focus for you guys. You can see the four little bolts. Very nice detail, actually. So again, you know, really up to par. Uh, no complaints. Uh, I originally thought it was maybe a little bit soft molding, but... Uh, now here's one place that I would probably criticize. Now this is the spare barrel and I guess it's got a little canvas uh, wrapped around the ends of it so it doesn't get dirty. Uh, but the sculpting on that, well, not, I have to say, not my favorite. Uh, I see that other people when they build this, they normally replace that and use some tissue. Uh, so I don't know like I'm sort of torn on this one because you know You do want to build it out of the box to show people what the product is but at the same time that isn't the greatest so a uh, Little last look at that wood texture. So there we go. Very nice. That's the that's probably looks like the tailpiece not sure uh, so there it is times one as I said, and that uh, is going to be E for echo. So that's the main spruce So let's have a look at some of the smaller stuff and finally, the kit's got four small bags with some various and sundries. We've got our clear parts here, poly caps. We've got our PE sheet here, some string and brass uh, wire. And we'll look at this stuff closely. And then we've got our decal sheet, which we'll look at last. Uh, but, you know, pretty straightforward clear parts. Uh, I'm curious to see how they fit. Probably okay in the frame. We can always use a diamond file. But one issue is, and I'm assuming those are the headlights, and they're smooth. And most headlights kind of have a texture to them, some ripples in them. And uh, those are smooth. Let me get up really close if I can. They look great. They're clear, but they're they're totally, totally smooth. So that's a bit of an issue. Uh, really nothing else there. All right, and just your poly caps. I don't know if you get any extras, uh, so don't lose them. Now, uh, yeah, they are white. Usually they're, these poly caps are black, but uh, they are buried in the hub, so it's no problem. And I always thought it was just Tamiya that had uh, poly caps, but there you go, Hobby Boss does too. And there's our PE sheet, uh, but before we look at that, you get this little string. Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be replicating metal wire. I think, actually, uh, you know, half tracks and such might have used rope for recovery, but you'd have to seal that. So I'm, I've never liked that stuff. Uh, you know, if there's a plastic version, I'll take that. There's the copper wire. Well, nothing too exciting to look at. Now, the PE sheet is good. It's, uh, you know, not too thick, not too thin. Probably just about right. Goldilocks sort of thing going there. And uh, some nice detail for the gun. And uh, thank goodness they give us the sights, the proper sights. I mean, trying to make that out of plastic would be impossible it would look cheesy i think some of the old 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 to me a wearable wind try to pull that off it didn't go well so that's fantastic now the one thing i did want to look at is this now i'm pretty much maxed out for how close i can get to the camera and my focus but what are you supposed to do with parts like this now here let me just get a blade here now interestingly enough i've actually worked with parts this small before and uh, that would be extreme modeling. This is in the realm of watchmaking and neurosurgery. So I don't know what you're supposed to do with parts like that. Uh, yeah, CA glue and that, but I have worked with parts like that before. So uh, beginner kit, uh, no, I would say not. That's incredible. Okay, so there that is. So let me just focus in on that. This is our PE sheet, other than those microscopic parts. Uh, there's some great parts in there and I'm glad that they included. A nice value added for a you know, mid-priced mid uh, kit. And there's the windshield wiper blades, which I do appreciate. I do not like when they are molded into the plastic, into the clear plastic, so that's great. So we can paint those up nice. Okay, so there's that. And finally, we are going to look at the decals but uh, I I'm gonna have to go off camera here to do something about this but I have never seen this before uh, this is actually taped on this little wax paper or whatever it is this is taped on so I have to remove that and uh, I've never seen that before is that excessive I don't know I'm gonna remove that and we'll have a, uh, have a closer look at these decals Okay, so that tape was pretty easy to remove. Just go in there with a sharp blade and be very careful. It's your first modeling test even before you start to build. But, uh, well, at least it protects the decal. So they're nice. Uh, no indication of when they were printed or who printed them. Probably an in-house project from Hobby Boss. They look good. The colors are somewhat muted. The white is way too stark. I wish the cow manufacturers would tone down the whites because they just blow your mind. But uh, only markings for one vehicle, unfortunately. 
And uh, there are some pictures floating around of a French unit that was firing this GMC Bofors, but the license numbers don't match. So that's kind of interesting. So that would obviously not be the source for this vehicle. So now the emblems, that's going to be France, of course, the borders uh, with that blue background there and the free French cross of Lorraine so this is a free French unit and of course the tricolor uh, well the French flag there and some of the yellow ammo box markings it's kind of nice uh, no instrument decals though which is a little disappointing but the uh, carrier film is tight to the colors which is nice and they look of pretty good quality I haven't used a lot of hobby boss decals but we'll see I don't think we're gonna have any problems there's so much aftermarket available too uh, for decals uh, Archer makes a nice one so and there the decals so and that'll do it for all the parts in our Hoppy Boss GMC Bofors and that'll do it for this episode of Tom's World Scale Model Series. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to check out our other scale model videos and stay tuned for new episodes which will be coming out in the very near future. As always, thank you for joining me. Stay well and all the best.